I am at war with the press with an ex-president of a country mm -hmm. so there is no level of power that you hold that will scare me BMTV. I am international I am Gambian and young and I've been violated and for a long period of time I decided to keep quiet with it mm -hmm. my fear what scares me mm -hmm. is the many men that walk around with powerful positions who are covering themselves in like good guy and half tans was violating young people mm -hmm. not knowing who those people are is what gives me sleepless nights mm -hmm. not confronting someone that i know have harassed someone or made them uncomfortable or uh, uh locked a door on them so when i confront the perpetrators the way i do whether it's aliu in hadith's case or whether it's malamin in the girl's case at the writers association that is what we are supposed to do that should be normal we should be able to walk up to people and say why the hell did you do that did you do what you did we am so mad. what would be your message to the general public that are watching this most especially um gambian and africans because we are far behind when it comes to um you know rape issues um sexual harassment you know we feel like reporting this case is a waste of time so what is going to be your general advice to each and everyone that is having this opportunity to watch BMTV. it might be difficult but just find a moment in your brain to just reflect and think about the possibility of other people's experiences that is not your experience mm -hmm. To understand that this culture is a very difficult one and for people to come forward and say they've been touched not even violated mm -hmm. touched sexually yeah. is a problem so for someone to get to a place to do that there has to be some iota of truth because it's not a culture that celebrates people speaking up mm -hmm. so get yourself to a place where you try to unlearn all the things you've been taught <laughs> about women about misogyny about patriarchy about just thinking that women are nothing but liars and gold diggers and storytellers and men are always right especially powerful men we have to really start thinking but again i believe mm -hmm. that the only way to change the mindset of the people is the radical movement of those that have been affected i don't have the time to wait for you to do the mental process of understanding me i will force you to understand me mm -hmm. by enforcing my truth by telling it so it ya muta da men ya muta woto nti nga muta da men nga muta woto nga lon nga lon juma la muta wala gara bambanta type of thing you know yeah. what i mean because yeah. i know i'm determined when you debunk me and call me a liar and go to bed i don't go to bed mm -hmm. I, I keep working. I keep seeking justice. I keep looking for lawyers. I am trying to document. I'm trying to do the work to get there. Mm -hmm. So I, in my truth, I am more determined than you in your doubt. BMTV. I am international. Yeah. Please don't forget to subscribe. Like. BMTV. 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 Good day, everyone watching us live. Um, it's evening in the Gambia at the moment. Um, today I'm here with Tufa Jalo. Um, Tufa, she's someone that is trying to advocate something in the Gambia. Um, she is also um, a victim, um, but then she doesn't limit herself alone, but try to involve other people. Today we are here at Allianz Franco. She organized an event, and she is going to tell us exactly why she did that. First of all, it will be important for you to introduce yourself, um, at least for those who do not know who is too far. Tufa Jalla, uh, sexual and assault violence survivor. Uh, I am an activist and an author, and I am also very keen on human rights issues. 
Uh, a lot of people have heard about me either the tr through the TRRC or Human Rights Watch as the woman who accused President Jame of rape. Um, I still stand on those grounds. Just because the headlines went out for you doesn't mean that I, stop it, I stopped doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I do my work through the TUFA Foundation in trying to bring visibility and understanding around sexual and gender-based violence issues. And today we're here because we are premiering a documentary that is trying to celebrate and recognize sexual violence survivors. Beautiful. Um, can you tell us exactly what is your experience mingling with other um, victims like yourself? Um, there's a lot of lack of confidence, right? Because they are within a society that tells them if they've been violated, they should keep quiet and keep mute and pretend like they're vulnerable. And some are, some are not. Uh, victims of sexual violence are very nuanced and they come in different ways. There's no one specific type of sexual and gender-based violence survivor. Mm -hmm. I am a proud one and I live my life in respective of what have happened to me. Mm -hmm. Others are crippled by what has happened to them. They can't integrate, they can't function, they can't talk, they don't have confidence anymore because of what has happened to them. So we have to be a society where we can recognize that doctors and nurses and businesswomen and everyday Gambian women and boys can be victims of SGBV. So I thought it was very important to show the different what types. Is that, what means STV? SGBV means sexual and gender-based violence, okay. meaning you violate somebody based on their sex and sexuality. Mm -hmm. That is their body, body parts and whatever sexual uh, uh, pleasure that they give you, but there is no consent in getting access to that. Yeah. That's what that means. And you're literally punishing them physically, verbally, or emotionally because of the sex they are mm -hmm. is to say this person is a woman so I can do whatever I want mm -hmm. this person is a young boy I can do whatever I want yeah. this person is someone that I don't know doesn't have protection and and wealth and is not a minister's daughter or son so I can do whatever I want so it's to abuse someone based on the sexual parts that they carry. Yeah. That's what SG, SGBV is. Yeah. Um, can you also tell us exactly what really motivated you to do what you're doing today? Knowing that a lot of people can't speak like me. I have grown into myself and do the, I, I have done the work that needs to be done, that I am at a place that is unapologetic and other people find it very difficult to consume me because they're not, have, they're not receiving me the way they want to. Mm -hmm. So I speak because a lot of people are not at a place that I am. I speak because I've gotten the privilege to tools and healing and, and, and processes that a lot of people don't have. So when I don't speak for them and speak for myself, who is going to? And I do it in hopes that someone can look at me and say, if someone can go through something like that and still define who they are, I can also do the same. I just hope they find inspiration in the journey and understanding that being violated as a vulnerable or as, as a woman doesn't mean that that's your entire life. I don't wake up every day thinking that I've been violated by a man. I have a life. I have hobbies. I have, I love, I have things that I love to do. So we have to understand Kablo Chodi Mola Kafuko. Is either the person is a mother or a fiancé, a girlfriend, a partner, something. They have a life and we have to acknowledge that. And that is what I want to celebrate. And if you're not comfortable taking that in, that's okay too. Yeah, <laughs> it's not my before problem. we end this um, interview, because it's not going to take long, yeah. probably we're going to create another time. I don't know when and where, uh, but um, uh, during your explanation and during the time um, the victims were trying to express themselves based on what they have been through, it's like your story were connected through them. How does that happen? Is it that they, do you really plan it or what, what really happened? The entire point of the documentary is to use my personal story mm -hmm. to connect with other stories. Okay. So, Tufa Jalo, Tufa Jalo, yeah, it's out there, but Tufa Jalo is not one person. And my experience is shared with many other people. So what I try to do with do is in my story whether it's the idea of silence whether it's trying to protect your perpetrator whether it's feeling shame 
or feeling like this is not me mm-hmm. i want to use my story because people put a lot of attention to tufa jalo mm-hmm. to bring attention to other stories how about the mariama cameras how about the mari mendis how about the many other names you could have been saying and you don't say them mm-hmm. right so i'm trying to bring attention to those stories by using my story so mm-hmm. first i have to introduce you to why i'm doing what i do mm-hmm. and i am similar to these people because i am gambian and young and i've been violated and for a long period of time i decided to keep quiet with it mm-hmm. because that is the right thing to do in our culture dinkendo ke dele musukendo buka mar ko ning boyin kan ko wal fo ni ya kere ki man ke din ke ndo te right so in order to break that cycle i have to bring other stories into my story to so when when you heard to fajalo it didn't stop there mm-hmm. there are thousands and thousands and thousands of to fajalo yeah. maybe to fajalo is the one who dare to speak so i refuse to keep quiet because i know that i'm not speaking for myself only yeah. Um I saw a group of people crying while you were trying to show them the video that the, uh, you know trying to share some part of the stories how did that happen and these are the people that were not in your shoes were not in their shoes so how did you see that and how do you feel it and I even had you also crying at some at some um at some stage mm-hmm. so tell us exactly how did that happen is it because of feeling of how they expressed themselves or is it because of how they narrated the story or what really happened or is it because the story is just um the reality or what i am one person who's so scared of crying or people that are crying i think crying is a very powerful emotion if it comes out it's great um I think also that is the power of storytelling. When you tell people stories, people can relate to them. And I am very passionate about telling people telling people stories. I can spend all day all night not eat, not drink, not do anything to bring people's stories out. Mm-hmm. Because once you do that, people can relate to them. People don't relate to headlines. Yeah. to fajalo got raped people don't relate to that mm-hmm. people relate to human stories and that's why i was telling their story so people can relate to it maybe they cried because they saw themselves in those stories maybe they cried because they recognize the pain that the family is going through mm-hmm. probably they cried because they can hear the level of emotional attachment mm-hmm. from the family and myself to those stories that it doesn't matter what you post or say or comment our lives are real and our feelings are real and they're true right mm-hmm. so i don't know why people cried but i am glad that they cried because you know what mm-hmm. most of those people that i have represented in that documentary have cried many nights without the camera okay. they've cried so many 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 nights they have grieved their lost right without people seeing or documenting it so maybe when you cry all you're doing is mimicking their feeling it is a natural I feeling ask, um, in one section i saw you you brought um, a gentleman or someone who was also part of um, the story um, where he attempted to rape someone and you confronted the guy um, how did you do that because we have to <laughs> as a society we have to i i again as i have mentioned i i confronted a lot of perpetrators that i can't feel into a documentary i don't care if i know you and i don't care if you again I am at war with the press with an ex president of a country mm-hmm. so there is no level of power that you hold that will scare me mm-hmm. but I also saw that the person wanted to have an opportunity to explain to us what got them to that place mm-hmm. and often we've never seen that we hardly hear from people that harass people mm-hmm. or perpetrators so I wanted to give room to that in the documentary but to say how I confronted them I didn't really care that's not my fear okay my fear what scares me mm-hmm. is the many men that walk around with powerful positions who are covering themselves in like good guy and half tans was violating young people 
not knowing who those people are is what gives me sleepless nights not confronting someone that I know have harassed someone or made them uncomfortable or uh, uh, locked a door on them. So when I confront the perpetrators the way I do, whether it's Aliu in Hadi's case or whether it's Mualamin in the girl's case at the Writers Association, that is what we are supposed to do. That should be normal. We should be able to walk up to people and say, why the hell did you do that? Did you do what you did? BMTV! Finally, um, I appreciate you coming, and then I want to use this medium to thank her um, for joining VM International TV. And then again, she's a brave girl, she's my sister, she's everything to me. But then I'm proud of her. What we're going to do, we're going to have this interview in a local language another time. I don't know when exactly, but we're going to arrange it so that our Mandinkas and Fullers, Jolas will be able to at least understand what you, were, uh, what you are trying to do now. Because I'm seeing you doing different things, um, which is connected to what happened to you. Yeah. So uh, I'm so proud of you. Thank and you. then how do you see VM International TV? Do you think we're doing great or do you think we should... Thank you for building interest in stories that maybe people don't care about. I think every institution develops yeah. and you get better. But the fact that you're interested in survivor stories and victims and women's rights, that is a very strong position. And I think that puts you on, the, uh, on a pedestal, right? Because yeah. some don't really care, yeah. right? So I also hope that as a medium, you will bring visibility around victims of SGBV besides yeah. TUFA, and that you will try to understand and meet with the families of SGBV survivors and to follow their cases in court to try to make the public understand how it is difficult to get justice yeah. when it comes to rape cases. So if you can invest your time in that, I will commend that. But other than that, to every other young girl watching, put your head up and be brave and speak your truth and don't care about what people say. As long as you are not able to do it, I'm not a Jay for Dunia Bay Taray. All right, thank you very much. Finally, we're saying goodbye, and then please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Um, that was interesting topic that we discussed here. Um, it wasn't official, but we really appreciate it. So may God continue to protect and guide us all. See you another time. VM so mbali fe kano lela VM so mbali fe VM so alana njani duntana nyi enji so tumbu VM so mbali fe kano lela muna VM mbe fe udalo lela apacha ki ala folo de wobite on ningo nying VM so wato tigede ala albulu kondi wadiki di alka folo wawule rin ningo nying ala wadiki di alka folo de VM so Nyancho Bije, Dijos Bije, VM Bije, Dimbali. Dimbali. Dimbali.